Nat, Spanish man child coming at you with another 12 year old live reaction to a new Legends of Runeterra champion as we are going to be reacting to Zoe. As you can see there, it was uploaded nine minutes ago, though actually I just got done recording an intro for another video, so uh, just you guys know, like this is actually not true. This was uploaded like 30 minutes ago, but I, I, I left the screen like this. Uh, so that, you know, I will record the other video first and then go on to this one. So let's take a look at Zoe and see what she's all about. A lot of people knew that she was coming. Um, you know, we, we have had leaks of like the champion's voice lines. So uh, from this point onwards, though, once this expansion is over, I'm pretty sure we have no information of uh, what's to come next. And that's pretty exciting, you know, because I, I, I do miss a little bit that that like wow factor, like Zoe, Nani, you know, like I, I, I wish I could do that, but I can't. So. Yeah, hopefully 20, 2021 will uh, change in that regard. Stop leaking, Riot, or stop getting leaked. Thank you. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, before anything, I'm pretty sure it is super duper sparkly indeed, but I am going to tweak this. The problem is when I tweak this, I have to like retweak it after because when I switch over to Twitter, my distributions are all messed up. Okay, come on. There we go. Perfect. Professional. Okay, so I, I well, we actually can see a lot right here. So she's a one man on one one. She's a she's a girl Timo. She's a girl Timo. Next strike, create a super. A super cool a super cool star chart in hand or if you have one reduce its cost by one I've seen you play ten cards with different names so she I, okay so a lot of people were mentioning how Zoe would very likely synergize with Victor and naturally like the first look at her we already get that impression you know she benefits from creation right creating different cards, but having diversity in creating patterns, which means that she benefits more from invoking rather than playing stuff like Draven, which will always give you the same card or like Chump One, for example. Uh, so keep that in mind. But like, I'm already thinking about potential synergies, like potential Targon Piltover decks with uh, the Supersible and even Pursuit of Perfection, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let, let's actually like, let's, let's actually study Girl Teemo for a second. For a second. <laughs> Oh, she, she, she's, um, how, how do you call that? Heterochromatic? I didn't know that. Well, F's in the chat for Poro. Poro just died. Uh, super cool star chart. Okay, so this costs two mana. And if you don't play this, at the beginning of every turn, it's going to drop in cost by one. Okay. Invoke a celestial card that costs three or less. So basically, a two mana burst speed spacey sketcher without the discard, right? That's her, that, that's her card. Yeah. Hey, you brought back my favorite star! The that attacked this round or is stunned. Wait, um. The unfortunate enemy that attacked this round or is stunned. So a three mana slow speed version of Ravenous Flock F feels. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> what? I know they're different regions, okay, but okay. Pick one of three enemy spells played this game and create a copy in hand. Created this game? Not not this turn, right? This game. Sorry. This game. Okay. Jesus, I'm, I'm ruining the video for a lot of you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna stop clicking, okay? Just gotta let it go. The wheel turns. Day becomes night. Time to make colors. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty animation for sure. It's not the most masculine, uh, but it, it, it is definitely very neat. Oh, there's, there's a sparky fly. I, I, I feel like, like there's like too much going on. <laughs> like, I, I feel like my brain is too old for this at this point. Okay, let, let's actually take a look 
uh, at Twitter. We're going to do like an actual transition this time around to make the video a little bit more professional, you know, because it's about fucking time. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. All right. We're back in Twitter, and uh, I did the best that I could with this image. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, Sparklefly, even though you guys can access this information as well, just follow Legends of Runeterra on Twitter. Sparklefly is a two-mana, one-two with Elusive and Lifesteal, right? So it kind of like reminds us of the uh, the Stellacorn, right? With a very low stat line in exchange for two very powerful uh, keywords. Combining Elusive with uh lifesteal if you have enough ways like if you if you put this card in a deck with like a significant amount of buffs it, it could actually uh end up being pretty viable because it could end up just being a tremendous counter to uh to aggro for example just having an elusive unit that can attack every turn and, and give you health back and could potentially be buffed so that it could be turned into a solid blocker as well like, I, I think in the right deck, this card could actually be pretty legit. There's a big difference between Sparklefly and the likes of Stellacorn. Despite the fact that Stellacorn has Spell Shield, you know, from 2 mana to 3 mana for, like, a, a build-up engine like this, I think it does. It, it, it really it really is a different case. So, I, I think Sparklefly could be legit. And, like I said, the right deck. But you're going to be very specific, uh, the, the builds you, you added in. Because otherwise, you know, it's, it's very low-statted, right? So we saw Zoe here. Um, now we know what she does when leveled up. I, I didn't focus that uh, too much on that with the uh, the video. For the rest of the game, when you summon an ally, grant it. I can't believe I didn't actually read this in the video. But when you summon an ally, grant its keywords to all allies. Nexus Strike, create a Behold the Infinite that costs zero in hand. So now, so so not only that, like you you no longer create super cool star chart. You create like an actual Behold the Infinite. Which is uh, definitely a better <laughs> a better card, right? Uh, super cool star chart does have a rarity in it, though, so it will actually have a like it's actually a card in the card pool, right? So it it will compete alongside uh, Behold the Infinite, which just seems strictly better, uh, even though maybe not. Maybe there's scenarios in, or, or decks in which you rather have access to you know the cheap Celestials uh, over like uh, the bigger pool, but I, I just don't see how that's the case. So she upgrades to Behold the Infinite, but most importantly, like, that ability is nutty. Like, that's just like, imagine Zoe with, dude, imagine Zoe with Heimerdinger. I imagine, dude, Zoe, Zoe with Heimerdinger is actually really interesting. Like, you're playing your turrets, and every time you play a turret, that turret is giving its keyword to all the rest of the turret. That's so dope. That's so dope. That's actually really cool. Like, people are saying, Zoe with Victor, and that that probably will end up happening uh, the same way Tom Kinch Soraka did, right? But, you know, because the devs want it to happen. But I think Zoe with Heimerdinger is also, like, really interesting. The thing is, like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to look into, like, how, how I can build that deck, right? Because there, there are certain decisions that you have to make deck building that are that will make a difference than your standard, like, target-based Heimer Vi, right? But that's just really cool. That's like a just a really cool concept uh, from the get go. I like the fact that she's such a cheap unit as well, uh, and that it's basically like her level of requirement is subpersable, and that that's that's really neat. I don't know. So because uh, you can run both of them, like there's no reason not to play her with subpersable if you're running in that that sort of deck, right? Anyways, uh, spell shoot, spell thief. Pick one of three enemy spells played this game and create a copy in hand. We saw this one earlier, so it's the entire game. This is the one that I basically rewanted like 47 times for. <laughs> and probably ruined the video for many. But uh, I, I really... It's a very interesting card, for sure. It's not like you're sacrificing much tempo for it either, right? You're just paying one mana. It's not the same as like going for two mana for something like Behold the Infinite or for the uh, Star Chart as well. So... Uh, it's actually a really interesting card and could see a lot of play in just any deck that benefits from playing multiple spells, right? Because this is like a very, you know, people were playing Behold the Infinite before they ended up cutting it ultimately from Lee Sin decks, right? But I think Spell Thief could definitely find a place just because of the fact that it's, it's, uh, half the cost, right? So, really neat card. Zoe's Sleepy Trouble. This is not the signature spell, by the way. This is the card that she generates, uh, so that, that's different. This is her signature spell. Two mana slow speed spell that uh, says stun an enemy, create a fleeting paddle star in hand, shuffle a Zoe in the deck because it is our signature scroll. Okay, and then you shuffle a paddle, 
which is still a common card. It's still uh, an actual regular card, and it's like a a poor man's ravenous flock, really. But I mean, the the requirement, like the first requirement, makes it like much easier to trigger. But everything else about the card is uh, strictly worse. But uh, this is interesting though, because a two mana, like it's basically a guile, like a bad guile for like I'm thinking about Yasuo Leona. Like if this card makes any sense, right? Over stuff like Steel Tempest, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I know it stuns, but. And the whole point of this card is it's one card that is giving you two different cards, right? So it helps you level up Zoe. But ultimately, it's not really... It's a pretty bad signature spell, if you ask me. I'm not... I'm not really sold on it. Um, I am sold on Starry Scamp, though. I, th I think Starry Scamp will be an absolute staple for for any, like, Celestial mid-range deck. Any, any Celestial deck, really. Like, the fact that this card can just be a 0 mana 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and because invoke decks in general don't run out of gas anyways, like their biggest issue is actually being able to, uh, play efficiently with their mana every turn. So ha having this thing just give you an extra body on the board. Like I just, I just don't, I, I, I think this card is fantastic. Like I, I think it's for, for very simple reasons, but just a, a free body is something that you're always going to like. And the only downside to this card is the fact that you draw it right and it, it takes up one space in your uh, in your draw if that makes any sense like it counts as a draw so it's not a card that's providing you with much of an impact right but as long as you're able to generate value consistently and always have new ways to generate it which is very easy for an invoke deck to do a card that comes in for free is always going to be great and uh, that's basically all i gotta say for starry scamp right here let's take a look at the other cards though because we have uh we have mentioned um you know, the cards from the video today. Oh, the look at Legend of Runeterra. They don't retweet me. <laughs> I cry every time. Shoutouts to the uh, to the NA uh, broadcast uh, team for that. For this for this uh, Sunday, because you guys don't know, I'm, I'll be casting the, the European uh, coverage. We'll probably be on Ride Games too, so we'll probably have like one-eighth of the viewership. <laughs> but, but yeah, it'll, it'll be fun nonetheless. Um... Where is, is this it? No, 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 we talked about this the other day. Here they are. Okay, this is a, this is like a very, I'm actually very excited to be able to talk about these as well. I could have made another video for this, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it more chill until the actual expansion is released, so I'm not overdoing it. And I'd rather just cover all of these things in the same clip. Uh, we're only like 13 minutes in anyway, so we're, we're Gucci. So this is, uh... These are the cards that were revealed yesterday, and we got some awesome stuff, man. Like, some legit... Well, we can just talk about uh, Captain Arika from here. Captain Arika is an 8-mana elite. Keep that in mind. She is an elite with Spell Shield that says, Play, Capture, or Unit, or Landmark. Not really a card that you would say, you know, is like... She's more of like just a general power bomb play for 8-mana, right? Like, this, this card can legitimately, f like, fit the vast majority of the Masian decks. But at the same time, it feels like it's one of those cards that decks can very easily go on without, right? Um, I don't think Captain Arika will be super impactful in the meta, but I do believe she will always be a viable option for Demacia decks that can be run as a one-off or as a two-off. Uh, that's basically my first impression. Uh, I think the card looks awesome. I think the design is really cool. But uh, for now, that's pretty much all I got to say about Captain Arika. When it comes to the landmark, though, holy crap. The Grand Plaza, beautiful art, by the way. When an ally is summoned, give it plus one, plus one, and challenger this round. Basically, everything that the Nox Krang Arena wanted to be. This is perhaps one of the best, if not the best, landmark uh, in the game once it comes out. Uh, you know, competing with the likes of Star Spring, even though they function very, very differently. But my God, it's cheap. It comes in early on, even though it will always be a tempo sacrifice. But from that point onwards, every time you uh, summon an ally, summon, not even play, summon, which is crazy. Because if you, like, if you have any sort of effect that can spawn multiple units, like, if you can play this with stuff like, I don't know, you can play Plaza even with, like, miss rates, even though it doesn't make any sense, right? But technically, both of your units would gain plus one, plus one, and Challenger, right? There's there's a lot of implications, and this card kit will definitely see you play outside of this, like, standard, you know, Demacia mid-range curved decks, right? Like, 
I, I, I'm very excited to mix this up with other regions that could benefit significantly from this. There have been uh, people mentioning potential combinations, like for example, from within Demacia itself, like the uh, the Grizzled Ranger or the Radiant Guardian. Both are great, right, with this. But then you move on to Bilgewater and you got the, the uh, Island Navigator, for example, which could be amazing with this as well. Like anything with Scout, getting the plus one, plus one at Challenger is just insane. And there's, there's a lot of, like, really neat combos. Like, this is definitely the most impactful and most viable card out of the package. Just gonna let you know. And uh, just a lot of implications for this landmark, man. I think it's gonna have a huge mark on the meta. Landmark. Mark. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's Captain Arika. We already talked about her. Uh, we got the Ever Shade Stalker. A two-mana 2-2 two -two with a Nightfall Trigger saying create a copy of me in hand as he has Fearsome as well, and the Ephemeral Tag. Unfortunately, he cannot block, which makes him, uh, generally speaking, a slow option. You're not going to be seeing Evershade Stalker in the majority of Nightfall decks, but something that this card does that's very interesting, in my opinion, is that uh, it uh, gives you a potential alternate deck for Nocturne. That's what excites me the most about this card, the fact that it's another Shadow Isles-based Nightfall unit, which makes it plausible at this point that you can actually work for a non-target based Nocturne deck. And that's something that I'll be, I'm going to be trying to explore with the Evershade Stalker. Also, the card provides you with potential ephemeral synergy as well. So another ephemeral unit, even though it kind of like reminds you of uh, the two drop, uh, the um, doesn't see any play whatsoever, right? The uh, what's her name? <laughs> Um, the elusive one. I, I forgot her name, but the, basically the, the two-mana elusive that will create a copy of herself if she next strikes in your hand. Uh, this is a very, very similar one uh, to that, though it does have the Nightfall requirement. But like I said, uh, I, I do think that maybe we can build an out-of-the-box, sort of like unorthodox approach at uh, Nocturne Nightfall. And just for that alone, I'm excited about the Evershade Stalker. Though his... You know, his hope may end up being, like I said, uh, as some sort of resource for not running out of gas for ephemeral list, but we'll have to wait. I've also seen some people mention uh, synergy between this and, like, um, the... The fact that it's a two-drop means that it will cost zero mana if it's, um... If you play the uh, the seven drop from Bilgewater. I forgot her name, too. Man, I, I'm forgetting all the names. Um, the Smooth Soloist. There we go. Uh, there is some, some potential synergy there and uh, that could be worth looking into as well but ultimately on paper it comes off more of like a, a niche meme card uh, more than anything else though time will tell if uh, there is more to the evershade stalker let's move on to the next one which is the pesky specter at first i read this wrong way i thought that it would create two copies of itself in your own deck <laughs> i was like this guy's terrible but then you know it's interesting it's really cool it's zero beta one one with ephemeral that it's just gonna like Every time you play him, you're going to be creating more and more copies on your opponent's deck. And if there's a way to, like, make copies of this card on the board and just, uh, I don't know, just find or, or, or generate more copies of this for your own deck. Like, you can really mess up with your opponent's draws. And this card is actually pretty funny. Uh, if you're, like, the problem with this card is that when your opponent plays it, they're kind of, like, doing the same thing against you, right? But the thing is, if you have, like, if you combine this with the, the four mana card from the Stalking Shadows, right? Maybe you could get some crazy value out of this. If you, if you play this in a deck that can cycle well, like, th this card could actually even be played in something similar to, like, a Go Hard Shadow Owls list, right? Because a deck that just cycles well through the deck has a lot of ways to draw for a very, very cheap amount of mana. You can just get these, like, buffed up units uh, from after a Stalking Shadows and uh, just really overwhelm the hell out of your opponent, right? While also messing up with their draws too. But it, it's just really, it's really wild. It's really like difficult to predict just how this card will play out because of the fact that your opponent, you know, once they start drawing theirs, even though you are disrupting them, they are going to disrupt you back, right? So uh, really, really interesting card design that I will be messing around with quite a bit. Don't expect great things out of it. But definitely catches my attention, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to mess around with the card. That's basically uh, where I'm at with it right now. Moonlight Affliction. Low key. Uh, not as amazing as the Grand Plaza, in my opinion, but really close. Uh, this is basically 5 mana, harsh wins with the leveled up Ash on the board. Which is nuts. It's not in Nightfall decks, for one. 
Like this card can push Nightfall decks back to tier 1 status, potentially make them more threatening again than the uh, Czechia Fearsome, which kind of like overtook them. Uh, amongst other things though, like this is a really, really powerful effect. I've seen people mention this card with like uh, elusive units as well and fearsomes in general. And that can also be the thing, like this combined with stuff like Risen Mist gives the Fearsome deck the ability to open attack in a much more menacing way, right? Like all of a sudden you can deny two blockers at burst speed, very expensively though, but and you do have to enable the Nightfall as well, right? But in the right build, this is really scary. This is like a legit, very good card for a proactive, uh, aggressive mid-range list specifically. And I think it's going to have a lot of uh, competitive potential. And uh, it will, you know, achieve just that. As uh, we have another, another powerhouse of a card. The Solari uh, Sunforger. People have been freaking out about this card. And rightfully so. It is a 4 mana 5-4. With a Daybreak ability that says give me lifesteal this round. First of all, it shares the same uh, total of stats as the, uh, the Elnuk. Um, the Bull Elnock, I believe it's... Yeah, the Bull Elnock is a 4-mana four 4-5. Four vanilla. That's the standard stat line, right? 5-4 is arguably worse than 4-5. You generally want to have more resilience in your units than overall damage output, for the most part. But in a deck, in a unit like this, it's actually better for it to be a 5-4 because you're getting lifesteal. This is the first card that you play your turn and you get a lifesteal with 5 attack, which means with barriers, with single combat, and a deck with like Inyasso Leona as well. This card is going to change things really significantly for Targon because all of a sudden there's a lot of decks that can run this and Leona in general just does not fear aggro anymore. Like, Yasuo Leona, one of the biggest weaknesses for Yasuo Leona was aggro. Now, I think Yasuo Leona is tier 1. I think people do not realize how good Yasuo Leona is. It is tier 1 with this card. Mark my words. This card will prepare a Yasuo deck to tier 1 status. And that is awesome. That's basically all I gotta say for it. But not only in Yasuo Leona, you're gonna see this fucking thing everywhere. Because it's just... Honestly, I think we are for... We're, we're going to be preparing ourselves for a dark era for aggro. And I I do not care about the aggro players crying. I, 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 I feed on their tears. I am ready for a slower, more, you know, where we actually get to play the game. And and get to play out our strategies and see which, you know, which are stronger, which are weaker. And, and just overall, you know, I, I like slower metas, okay? I am a little bit biased. <laughs> Fuck Smork. Uh, long live the Solari Sunforger. Praise me. Praise be the fruit. Praise be the... <laughs> I don't know what he's holding, but praise it. And that's... Uh, yeah, this video went from like 13 minutes to 23 minutes as I talked over all these cards. Or spoke English. Targon Speak is the landmark for Targon. Uh, it is very hard to evaluate. Obviously, this card can put in a lot of work in late game ramp based decks or just ultra greedy decks in general. And if the meta is indeed going to slow down that this is the proper environment for this card right here. But the fact that it's a symmetrical effect and that it's helping your opponent out makes me think that this card will not really find any sort of competitive viability because it is too... It fluctuates too much, right? Like, there are some matchups in which you're just going to make it so easy for the opponent. If they're, if they're playing Field of Rush themselves, for example, that's... Uh, you're just playing with fire, man. So I, I don't... I, I definitely will be messing around with this, but I don't expect it to be anywhere near the competitive level of the likes of the Grand Plaza. It's called Grand Plaza, right? Yeah, gotcha. And that's basically all I gotta say. Uh, I went over all the cards, and yeah, man, we're getting some really exciting shit. It's just, I'm gonna end the video with a bit of a question towards you guys, uh, because, you know, this is uh, this is important. Um, what have you guys thought about this, like, expansion uh sort of like release pattern from riot right uh the fact that we've been getting a new expansion every two months um because honestly let me know what you think because honestly i i'm, I'm not the biggest fan uh, i was initially because the idea of having uh new cards every two months seems to fix a lot of the issues that you know card games in general have with uh, expansions and releases right like there's this spike in popularity after a new set is released and eventually it keeps going down and down and down until the very end of an expansion like the last month in which you know the numbers are super low the interest is, is just <laughs> close to non-existent at that point and then a new expansion comes out 
and uh, you know the hype is built up all over again. Honestly, um, having gone through both at this point, despite the fact that I was uh, very much uh, in favor of uh, this concept, after we put it to test, um, I, I do believe that the old uh, the old way was better. I, I would rather wait four months between expansions and get a full expansion when we actually get an expansion because uh, I just, we're getting some really exciting cards to mess around with. Like, we're getting some really cool shit. But we're, we're barely getting any cards, right? Like, uh, this is going to last for like a week, two weeks, probably two weeks. Like, two weeks of fun. And then it's just like out, you know? It's just, maybe not even that. Just because of like how underwhelming the last batch was. We got some really cool cards with Tom Kench and stuff, but... Ultimately, um, I, I feel like these this these expansion packages are overall too small, and uh, that's my opinion though. And I, I would like to know. I know the effect that it's had on me. I would like to know uh, you guys. Uh, naturally, what matters is you know when this expansion comes out, you know it's gonna be amazing for at the very least a week, and I will make sure I'll milk the hell out of that. <laughs> like I'm, I'm gonna be playing like hell until. You know, I get burnt out like crazy again. So that's just kind of like how I approach games. Like, I, I don't know how to play them in any other way. So uh, that's what I will be doing. I don't know about you. But I, I really thought this would, this would be a very interesting discussion to talk uh, about. And uh, I want to hear you guys' opinion because uh, I feel like this is uh, some very important potential feedback that we could send back to Riot. As uh, we'll see if they are willing to perhaps open up a debate as regarding, you know, what they will be doing, right? Because uh, maybe they're just set on being like, no, no, we said we're going to do expansions this way. This is what we're going to be sticking with. There's no room for debate. Or if they're open for, you know, if the community is asking for the, uh, the other thing, maybe they'll change their mind. Regardless, that's basically where I'm going to stop this ramble. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And that's... Pretty much it. Hope you're excited for the cards as much as I am. And hope you're getting a great December. And you have a fantastic Christmas as well. Love ya. I'll see you around. Leave a like. And my intro is all... My outro, actually, is all messed up. <laughs> it's so it's so messed up that I just went with, like, intro instead of outro. I'm gonna stop talking. Because I'm just ruining everything. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around.